Okay, here's 2005. So we'll show the conclusion. Now, if this were a biconditional we were trying to show, we would show the component conditionals, but it's not a biconditional, it's the negation of a biconditional. So we'll make an indirect assumption. We can bring in our two premises. Now, if we look at line 4, we see it's the negation of a disjunction. And if we have um, DM enabled, that's what we want to use. We can apply DM and we get not P and we get not not S. And that's, this is the way we want to go. Okay, so uh, if we didn't have De Morgan's, we'd have to do show on neg four, right? That's how we work with um, negations of disjunctions if we don't have De Morgan's. And then we things get complicated. We have to make an indirect assumption. We'd have to uh, show P, and then we'd have to show S. And this is complicated and confusing. It actually ends up in the same place effectively as using De Morgan's, but it's much more involved than it needs to be. So we're just going to stick with the De Morgan's application. And if you haven't proved De Morgan's, you really should. You want to prove that uh, theorem 66, which will enable the De Morgan's rule. So, okay, we have uh, not P and we have not not S. So we want to use lines 2 and 3. So if we look at line 3, we see it's a conditional. Antecedent is S or R. So if we can get the disjunction S or R, we can do modus ponens. Well, we can get the disjunction S or R. We can, if we, well, we can get it from S or we can get it from R using the addition rule. And we can get S like this. And so now we can add R on the right. Add to S, R, and add it on the right, and we get S or R. And that's the antecedent of line three, which is modus ponens. Now there's a derived rule. So, well, we now, so we've used three and four. Now we want to use two. We have Q. So we can do, uh, uh, the biconditional tells us that P, if and only if Q. So it tells us that P and Q have the same truth values. And that means we're basically in position to get an indirect derivation because we have not P here. So we know P is false. This tells us that Q is true. So 6 and 10 tell us that P and Q have different truth values, but 2 tells us they have the same truth value. So we should be able to extract a contradiction stri quite straightforwardly. So one way to do that would be this. We'd say 2, let's have the biconditional from Q to P, i.e. the biconditional from, the conditional, excuse me, from Q to P, so the conditional from right to left. And we now have a contradiction with line six. There's another slightly easier way we can do this though. There's a, a derived rule called BP which says if you have P if only you have if and only if you have Q and you have P, you can apply BP to get Q. And it also works as if you have Q, then you can get let's see. You can get P. And then there's a version that says if you have not Q, what can you get? Well, they have to have the same truth value if they can, for the biconditional feed to be true, so you get not P. So we can apply that in our derivation here. That's theorems 74, 75, 76, and 77 that's noted on the website. Very easy to derive. So we have P if and only if Q. So what are we going to do here? Well, we could say 210 BP and we'd get P and that contradicts line 11, which is not P and we have an indirect derivation. So that's uh, derivation five. And um, yeah, I hope that was helpful.